Megan and Albert, hi. <laughs> Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Let's, hey, let's try that one more time. Good morning, church. Good, Good morning. morning. <laughs> Yes, amen. It's great to hear everybody's voice this morning and to see your smiling faces. Um, welcome, everyone, out in Facebook that may be watching us live or watching it recorded later, as well as on YouTube. You can find uh, our channel there. You can look at any of the services that we've uh, recorded. We have uploaded those, so um, like and share on Facebook and YouTube, if you would, please. That would be great. We don't have any visitors that I see yet. That means they could still be coming in. So we'll, we'll welcome them when, when they walk through the door. Uh, just as a reminder, the offering basket is in the back. Um, we do have the options to uh, tithe um, an offering on our website, friendsfamilychurch.org. Just click on the donation tab, and we appreciate your support for this ministry. For our announcements this morning... We have our Wednesday night service at 6.30 p.m. And then this Thursday, which is May the 2nd, that's the National Day of Prayer. Amen. And Sun City Christian Center is hosting the event. And the prelude begins at 6 p.m. So I'm not sure how long that's going to last. Um, but shortly after that, then the um, services will start for the prayer over what was seven different um, categories that uh, that will be prayed over. Um, again, just a reminder, check out our bulletin board in the fellowship hall. There's uh, new items up there. So we, uh, I think that's all the announcements that we have. But for prayer requests, do we have any prayer requests, any new ones? Yes. Yes, we, we want to lift up the Rothenbush family. I know we have several folks that are traveling this week, Richard and Joanne, and I think June it will be traveling um, this week. And also Debbie's um, out today, and Johnny and Michelle are out. They'll, they should be traveling back this week. Um, so we'll be happy to see them next Sunday. Yes, Barb? And Jim is traveling this Saturday. Okay. Yes. Amen. And Jim was leaving Friday, you said? Yeah. Okay. Ah. Uh, oh, might be a fishing trip, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Absolutely. Um, <coughs> let's see. We mentioned Debbie and then Johnny and Michelle. And then also um, Ashley uh, for her knee and her back. Yes. And also remember... Um, Donnie's brother, R.B., and, and, and his Stole. daughter, Cheryl, um, with the loss of family members. And then we also had another uh, person that has asked for prayer, asked for prayer, and that's Clarence Ramey for his help. So if y'all would remember um, them as well. Um, those family members that uh, we've been praying for for salvation, if we could keep those uh, uh, continued in our prayer, as well as uh, for the peace of Jerusalem. Amen. That would be uh, definitely very, very important <laughs> during these, these times. Um, does anyone have a praise report? I'd like to hear a praise report. Sue's here. Yes, so she must be feeling better. Amen. Yes, amen. amen. We'll claim that praise report. <laughs> amen. Yes, welcome, welcome. Okay. Let's go ahead and do the opening scripture, and then we'll do the prayer. And Kay and Jerry are going to be doing our call to worship song, and then we'll start in our praise and worship service. Okay, our opening scripture is in Isaiah chapter 40, and we're going to take a look at verses 27 through 31. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? 
My way is hidden from the Lord, and my just claim is passed over by my God? Have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary? His understanding Amen. is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail or fall. Excuse me. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew Hallelujah. their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk thank you, and thank not you, faint. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That's one of my favorite scriptures, Isaiah 40, verse 31. Amen. Amen. All right, Father, we come to you today, Lord, and we just thank you that we have the opportunity to be in your house, your sanctuary. We just thank you, Lord. We just feel your presence with us, Lord God, just the overwhelming love and comfort and acceptance of who we are. No matter what thank we've you, done, Lord. no thank matter where you, we've been, no matter what we said. And, and, Lord, we just thank you that we can, we can have your forgiveness if we just ask for it. And we thank you, Father God, that you can wash away the uncleanliness that we had and that we do have, Father God, that we are washed white as snow, Lord, and we are covered under the blood of Jesus Christ, his precious precious blood that was shed for our sins lord that he died on the cross not just for me but he died on the cross for you everyone and we thank you father lord we just take this day as we honor you as we worship you father god in our in our songs and in the message that's brought forth today lord that there'll be words that we'll need to hear today and we need to pay attention closely to what's been said so we can grab each and every nugget that will be shared today. Father God, that will just be our rock that we need to stand on for things that will come our way this week, Lord. That we will mount up on wings like eagles, Lord. Yes. We will run and not be Hallelujah. weary. We will walk and we will not faint. Teach us, Lord. Teach us, Lord, how to pray. Lord, and we just thank you, Father. Lord, we just lift up each and every one that we've mentioned this morning, whether they're traveling, whether it's for health, whether it's for comfort, for salvation, Lord God, uh, for the peace of Jerusalem. Lord, you, you not only know and heard our prayer request, the ones that we've spoken and the ones that we've not spoken, but every prayer request, request on planet Earth you know about, and you have answered so many. And we thank you, Lord. We bless your name for all of those faithful, uh, faithful answered prayers that we've trusted in, Lord. And we just, we just praise you. We just, we just can't say enough thanks. We, we can't even count our blessings that you've given to us, Lord, because some of them, we don't even know what they are, but we've been blessed by you, and we thank you. Lord, be with us in the service today. Lord, be with us over this coming week, Lord, wherever we go and whatever we do. Protect us in our travels and commutes, whether it's to errands, grocery store, work, wherever we go, Lord, that you that you prepare in a way for us, Lord, and that we'll have just a wonderful week. As, as we think on you at, during these drive times and commutes, Lord, and we just praise you. We love you, Lord, and we ask this in the precious name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank Thanks, you, Father. Lord. Yes, there is victory. <clears throat> Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you.
Kay and Jerry were excited about the song you're going to do for us, and I think Johnny's or Donnie's going to jump in. No, they're going to. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. We're going to see Don, him jump, Don, right? Donnie's going to play maybe the guitar. Uh, they're going to sing, and I'm going to play right. along with them. Praise his name, praise his name. Sometimes the shadows fall over me. That's when the pathway is not easy to see. I'm never worried wherever I go. I'll follow Jesus He knows the way home He knows the way home So I'll follow Him When skies have turned gray And pathways broke good to know the way home. As you were singing that, uh, my mom's been gone many years. I know how in life, some of the things of life, they cause us to change. And as I hear sermons or technical information or whatever, I'm always being reminded or a review of what I already knew. 
or something I'm being taught new. One of those things that seems like are always happening. And so sometimes in my life, I, I realize that I need to do ABC again, <laughs> whatever that may be, technically or, or spiritually. I need to find my way home. But I was going to say about my mom that she was one of those that, I remember we went to Cleveland, Tennessee. My brother was in college there. And we went to pick him up for Christmas time. And, and she didn't even pull a road map out. She not only knew the way home, she knew how to go pick up her son. She had probably, I didn't think about it two years later, she probably had studied where every one of us were. <laughs> My older brothers that were already out, she knew how to get them back home and not just herself. But then later in years as Alzheimer's settled in and age and different things, the only thing I can remember that she really focused on and she said, son, I want you to help me. And I said, yes, mom, what is it? And she was struggling with all of those things of life, age and everything else, and forgetting and not wanting to forget. She says, I'm going to quote scripture, and if I get it wrong, I want you to straighten me out. And she would start out with, the Lord is my shepherd. She would weep through it and say, I shall not want. And then she might go into a different skip a section or something and I would help her. Oh, oh yeah, she, she would say. But she didn't want to forget the way home where her foundation was. She didn't mention anything about any of us or Cleveland, Tennessee. She was at that time of her life and she kept quoting scripture. Help me with this one. And she just went over scriptures and she just would, that would be her, her way to help herself in her memory. So do we know the way home? This song says, I'm going to give him glory. Are you ready to do that today? I will give him glory, yes. I will give him praises, uh-huh. I will shine his light deep into the night. I will give him glory, I will give him glory, yes, I will give him praises, uh-huh, every song I sing, I just want to bring glory to my King, is that your prayer, sing it again if you would, I will give him glory, yes, I will give him praises, uh-huh, I will shine His light deep into the night. I will give Him glory. I will give Him glory, yes. I will give Him praises, uh-huh. Every song I sing, I just want to bring glory to my King. Sing again. I will give Him glory, yes. I will give Him praises, uh-huh. I will shine His light deep into the night. I will give Him glory. I will give Him glory, yes. I will give Him praises, uh-huh. Every song I sing, I just want to bring glory to my King. And every song I sing, I just want to bring glory to my King. Tell the Lord once again. Lord, every song I sing, I just want to bring glory to my King. You mean that this morning? Give Him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said He inhabits the praises of His people. Hallelujah. Praise His name. Oh, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Yes, He is. Righteous run into it, and they are saved. Oh, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Do you know Him today? Righteous run into it, and they are saved. 
blessed be. Oh, sing, blessed be the name of the Lord. Yes, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. Sing, blessed be the name of the Lord. Yes. Blessed be the name of our Lord, blessed be the name of our Lord, most high. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, righteous run into it, and they are saved. Yes, everyone, hallelujah. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, righteous run into it, and they are saved. Holy is the name as we sing, holy is the name of the Lord, yes, holy is the name of the Lord, yes, holy is the of our Lord, most high. Sing, holy is the name of our Lord. Holy is the name of our Lord. Holy is the name of our Lord, most high. Let's give glory to the name of the Lord as we give glory to the name of our Lord. We give glory. Glory to the name of our Lord, yes, glory to the name of our Lord, most high. Give glory to the name of our Lord, we give glory. Glory to the name of our Lord, yes, glory to the name of our Lord, most high. Oh, the name of the Lord, hallelujah. The name of my Lord is a strong tower, righteous run into it, and they are saved. Oh, the name of the Lord is a strong tower, righteous run into it. Softly, the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Oh, hallelujah. The righteous run into it, and they are saved. Oh, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Just run into it, oh, and they are saved. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Do you need the safety of the Lord today? Praise you, Lord. 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 The Lord said that I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. This song goes along with that. It talks about how steadfast the love of the Lord actually is. As we read that he's never sleeping, he's never slumbering. Out of Isaiah 40, as we open the service today, you can always be confident, continually confident, as the word says, that he is always there. Sing this song today. Let every every ounce of anxiety that you may have today about some subject, your health, your family, your government, the elections, whatever it may be, focus on the Lord Jesus. I won't go into details, but I saw this morning that someone had on their window in their car. It says, in, I, in the elections 2024, I'm voting for Jesus. <laughs> How can you go wrong? I mentioned that they might not have his name on the ballot. 
And they said, I'll write him in. <laughs> How much do you love the Lord today? Is he your strong tower? The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Yes, new. say to you the Lord is faithful mercies never cease healing never ceases his love is continuous Completing in, in my treatments for cancer. Some may know, some may not. But my surgeon released me a few months ago. Said it's been five years and I don't see any reason for you to keep coming back. He's the same one that told me I needed another surgery. He said, You really ought to have it done. And I said, can I have a little time to think about that? That's, that's, that's quite invasive, quite severe. I've already been through a lot just getting to this point. Had a surgery already. But it was like the insurance policy. And I got to thinking, I said, you know, I told him. And two weeks after I had that visit, and he said, you know, I want you to, I want you to think about the surgery. He, I came back, and he had another surgeon in there with him, and they double-teamed me. <laughs> you really need this surgery. And I said, somewhere in my life, as the pastor of a church, I have to exercise faith. I can't always walk in just doing what the normal routine is, protocol they use, the words like, and 
you're out of sequence by not doing this as a next step. And I said, you know, in the Bible it talks about Paul, and he says, my God is faithful. He said, and to live is Christ, and to die is, is gain, not loss, is gain. I said, so Doc, if the Lord's through with me or finished with me, there's not enough doctors here to keep me. But if he's not finished with me, there's not enough doctors here to take me out either. I walk in faith and not by what I see or my sight. And I said, so this is my profession of faith that I, I'm not going to do that. Well, my surgeon, as I just said at the beginning, he released me after five years. I can't see any reason. Well, I just went through this week, my oncologist, blood work and everything. They said the markers for cancer, they could find zero, none. Praise Hallelujah. Woo. Amen. The steadfast love of our Lord, it never, never ceases. They said they want to do, in October, another CT scan, another blood work, consultation, and then my oncologist says that we can't find anything. The only thing we see is your protein is a little bit low, but it's every time we run a test, it's always low. Maybe that's just normal for you. And I said, well, if I need it to come up, the Lord will fix that too. And I told her, I said, I thanked her for their help. And I said, in October, I'm believing that I'll be completely finished with the treatments. Maybe some follow-up surveys or different things, but my Lord, His love never ceases. Amen. His healing never ceases. His mercy never ceases. His concern for every one of you today at home and those that are here, it never ceases. He slumbers not and He sleeps not. Hallelujah. And He's looking into the welfare of your life. He said the birds of the air, they go and they fly and they do all of that. And they never toil or labor. And the Lord feeds them. How much more, the Scripture says, will He care for you than those? Do you believe that today? Amen. I hear. Praise God. Yes. Amen. 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 Oh, the stead. Fast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Yes, new every morning. Great is thy faith. this morning hallelujah hallelujah for thou art worthy great Jehovah yes oh thou art worthy the mind Tell the Lord. 
Lord, and He is worthy. Yes, Lord, You are worthy. Great Jehovah. Oh, You are worthy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You're the mighty God. Yes, You Worship the Lord this morning. Let Him meet your needs. Thank you, Lord. Meet every need. Let none go, Lord. Hold today without being blessed. Once again, softly tell the Lord that He is worthy. Oh, you. We listened to the story just recently with Easter. The guard looked upon the cross, and when Christ said that it is finished, and he bowed his head, he just hung that head, and then he passed away. He was gone. And the guard at the bottom, he says, Surely, truly, this was the Son of God. Have you come to the realization as to who Jesus was? No matter what faith you're in, what you believe, do you know the story of Christ? Have you heard the glorious message? Has it entered into your heart? Or is it still in your thinking? You're evaluating? Do you believe that He is worthy? Jesus, would I know more of His grace to others show, more of His saving fullness see, more of His love who died for me. More about Jesus, let me learn. More of His holy will discern, Spirit of God, my teacher be, showing the things of Christ to me. For about Jesus in His Word, holy communion with the Lord, hearing His voice in Every line making each faithful say mine. More about Jesus on his throne, 
Riches and glory all his own. More of his kingdom sure increase. More of his coming glorious peace. More about Jesus on his throne. Riches and glory all his own. More of his kingdom sure increase. More of his coming prince of peace. More about Jesus. More, more about Jesus. Yes. More, more about Jesus. More of his saving fullness see. More of his love who died for me. Sing more, more about Jesus. Yes. More, more about Jesus. More of his saving fullness see. More of his love who died for me once again. Give the Lord praise. That's fine. Yes. Give the Lord praise. Oh, he said he inhabits your praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wonderful Savior. Risen Savior. Soon coming King. Redeemer. Hallelujah. The light of the world. Precious Savior. Hallelujah. Do you want to know more about Jesus? Amen. <laughs> yes, give him praise. We want to know more about Jesus. Fill us, Lord, with your word. Let all of our words be forgotten. And let your words ring like these songs today. Let them well up in our spirit in times that we need them. Bring them back to our memory, Lord. Sometimes we are just being reminded, as I said earlier, and sometimes we're actually learning, being taught something new. Lord, do a new thing within your church, within your people. Teach us, Lord, thy ways, thy concepts. For higher are your ways than ours. Teach us your ways, Lord. First verse again. More about Jesus would I know. More of His grace to others show. More of His saving fullness see. More of His love who died for me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you this morning. You can be seated. Thank you. I don't hear you. Sitting here thinking about the words of this song, you know, the world is less, less about Jesus, less, less about Jesus, more about me, my independence I see, more of the love just for me. That's the world, you know, that's not what these, this song penned in 1851, you know, in, in that area. Um, it's more about Jesus. You know, that, that's, that's what the Word tells us. That's what we believe. That's how many of us have grown up knowing. But there's so many today that think the, think the Bible is fiction. It's, it's not really true. It's just another book. But it's, it's the inspired words of God that was penned um, by many people that that was appointed to do so. Those those words were breathed into them and penned down. And it's and it's all about Jesus and it's less about us. 
You know, I mean, we we are here for a specific purpose because we were, we were made in God's image. We were we were made for Him. We weren't made for ourselves. You know, we we, we were made to worship Him. You know, and, and to serve Him, and we we were given a divine commission, the great commission, to spread the gospel throughout the world. You know, and and everybody can do that part. You, you, you may not be a preacher, you may not be a teacher, you may not be a, a great speaker or a presenter or, or any of that, but you can like and share the services on Facebook. That's spreading the gospel because I don't know who you know and, and you don't know who this one knows and you don't know who that one knows. And, and before you know, you, you spread the, me- the message out. They may not listen to the whole thing, but they may hear a nugget that they need to hear. And that's what's important. They, they don't have to listen to all, all of it, but they need to hear what they click on at the time they click on it because that was meant for them. You know, that it, it really, really was. And, you know, we just kind of need to get, get out of the me, you know, and, and, and get into the God. <laughs> right? right? And that, that is so hard to do because we're independent, right? We... We, God gave us free will, but the free will, you have to be subjected and under the authority of God, you know, in what you do and, and in everything you do, you know, even just driving to work or going to the grocery store, you know, it's, are you, are you talking to God? Hey God, you know, I just, you know, what, what type of relationship do you have? Do you have the relationship that when you're going to the grocery store, it's like, Oh, Lord, I would really like to have a really great parking spot, you know. And what do you know? He opens that up for you, you know. I mean, it, it's just amazing. Or you're driving to work, you know, and, you know, in 615 traffic, Tampa traffic, and it's just like, man, I really hope there's not a wreck today, you know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I would really like to get through the Apollo Beach uh, malfunction junction, you know, without slowing down, you know. And it ha- happens, you know, Super for... You know, it's very simple things when you see the power of God, you know, and, and his simple answered prayers, because it's just like, oh, Lord, please let me have green lights and not stop lights today, you know, and then it's like, boom, 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 everyone I get going to work is green, and I'm like, yes, <laughs> and it, it, it's so exciting to see the very simple things, but just being submitted to him and having that relationship with him that you can talk to him one-on-one. I mean, right? He's your should be your best friend, right? And your father, God, you know, your Abba Father. So he's he's there for you, you know. So I just encourage each one to get committed in your relationship with Jesus because he's there for us, you know, and he wants to be here for us and here for you. So I hope and encourage you um, to start your communicating with Jesus and in your daily activities and see what a big change that it makes in your life because it truly does. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Hallelujah. Thank you all so much this morning. I appreciate Kay and Jerry with uh, Johnny and Michelle not here and uh, they stepped in to help me and uh, Miss Sue doesn't know it, but we were going to ask her this morning to join us and and uh, she, she was moving kind of quickly. It was time for church. So it didn't happen, but, but be thinking about it. And, uh, and uh, just kind of like everything is by faith. <laughs> so we move, uh, we move by faith, not by what we see, but by faith. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. I appreciate Kim playing the flute this morning. Lord knows I really like the flute. And uh, just enjoy it. Yes, thank you. Praise the Lord. And uh, I appreciate, as I said, Kay and Jerry stepping in to help and fill in the the gaps. And and whenever they're here, just feel welcome to do that. And it's got a little bit of a roar if you're asking. Turn the monitor down maybe just a little will probably solve it. And I hear it kind of a little roar like it's in a drum. But anyway, I'd like to speak to you today for a few minutes, and I, I appreciate all the times before that you've let me speak to you. 
I, and uh, you say, well, you know, I, I try to go back and I try to not be repetitious, to, to just keep saying the same thing over and over again, but to share with you the, the, the fruit basket of all that's in it and the blessings of God. And, and I know, uh, uh, what do you call it? The, the, uh, the, all the, 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 the cone like on the Thanksgiving table. Cornucopia, that's the word I was looking for. I hadn't thought about that. That's, I told you, I'm always being reminded or I'm learning, one of the two. And so this morning I'm being reminded, cornucopia. But anyway, there's so much fruit, so much in there, and I don't like the artificial ones. Just, But the natural ones, the real ones, that you can actually take out of, and not just for looks, not just for show. I'm making a point here. Anybody following me? That, that, that there's something in there that nourishes me, and it's different. It may be the apple or the, or the Bartlett pear. I don't like sand pears. They're good in preserves. I like preserves out of sand pears, but I don't care for just to eat a sand pear. But Bartlett pear is good. The pear is good. But uh, bananas and things, Kim says, yuck, or grapes or whatever's in that cornucopia. But the Spirit of God, this is a lot like that. And it's full of love. It's full of the encouragement. It's full of all of those good things. And it says, thy words were found and I ate them. <laughs> thy words became for me a joy. Hallelujah. Not a burden. Ooh, I don't like that. <laughs> and some of us, when we read the, the Bible, I think we do that. Oh, I don't like that. I, I'll stay out of that page. I won't go back there. But I'm telling you today, the fullness of what's in there, there is blessing and there's joy in there. So I try, to, I try to share with you in a way that I give you some of those different things. And that that Kim doesn't like, the bananas, I love them, you know. I, a banana pudding, if it's on the table, I really, I, if there's two or three different kinds, I want to try them all. And sometimes at the end of the meal, that's not good. And so we have to be reserved and, and maybe take some home for a snack later so we don't overdo it. But I say to you today, we have a spirit that needs the variety of God's freshness, of God's blessing. Our spirit needs nourishing. If I were to create, I probably could do what I'm about to say, and it could be put into a, 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 a maybe I shouldn't say it, some psychologist somewhere will probably take it and build it. But you could put together a, a set of questions that would actually figure out exactly where you are in relationship with Christ. Go through, answer these questions, however many, 20, 80, 100, whatever it takes, to be able to accomplish the fullness of the things of God and what your perspective is on it at that moment without using this as an open book test, but to go from here out of that that we're being reminded of again. You say, oh, I knew that, but you know, I hadn't thought about it in a long time, and I, I'm glad that it was refreshed in my memory. And then you might have, oh, that's, that's brand new. I haven't heard that before. I didn't realize that. Uh, we were in the fourth chapter of uh, Ephesians, which I preached some last Sunday out of Ephesians, but we were in the fourth chapter in Wednesday night, and we made it almost through the first verse <laughs> to give you an idea of how much fruit is in there. And I told him, I said, this passage of Scripture, I mentioned it this morning with Jim and talking with him there again this morning about Wednesday night. I said, that whole chapter, it's like every, every just every few verses, it just, it's just like welling up, rolling over and teaching and, and admonishing and, and bringing us to a right relationship with Christ. I said, I, I just, when I get into the fourth chapter of Ephesians, I just, I, just can't, I just can't get past the verse. It just seems like it just becomes amplified for me. And so we shared some of those things Wednesday night. I appreciate those that were there, and uh, we will be having service again this Wednesday night. And uh, I know that some of you will be going back north, and what we have done in the past is we may... Uh, through the summer, we may, uh, because the numbers are, are not very much, so we may just uh, curtail going to the Wednesday night service, but I don't know yet. My, my decision is, if, if I'm the only one there, me and Jesus, well, I'll, I'll come and pray, and then I'll go home. And sometimes I've done that. But, you know, great is God's faithfulness. Great is the faithfulness of God within you. Not just His faithfulness, but when you exercise the faith and the faithfulness of who He is. 
when you exercise that, you're a conduit for others. I've been in the meetings before building youth groups, and I've seen when I, I didn't have anybody there but me. It was a new church. I had the piano player's son and the preacher's son. It's the only two boys I had, and they were out of town, so I was there by myself. I came, I knelt, I prayed, and I read a scripture, and I said, Lord, you do what you need to in me at this moment. When Jesus first started his ministry, and some of the passages I'll give you today, that you'll, you'll recognize it. I want to take you to Isaiah 42. And I want to speak to you as the title of this sermon today, By Faith, comma, we have His Spirit. If you don't have His Spirit, I would, according to Scripture, I would, when I share this, you'll understand, well, I don't really have to, all I have to do is confess and I'm saved. Okay, you're saved, but to what measure are you walking in His Spirit? You can walk in a, I've met people that said because of His grace, and, and they don't seem to be any different than they were before they got saved. But the scripture says that I read from, all things passed away, all things become new. And so I look at it, and some of this today will not, will, will kind of hinge on those type thoughts. So as I lay a foundation for you today, by faith, comma, we have His Spirit. Jesus said the same Spirit that raised me from the dead will quicken your mortal bodies. The same Spirit. A lot of things in the Scriptures are mentioned about the Spirit but we walk in a vagueness of how to recognize it, how to walk it and exercise our faith in the Spirit. And so with that said today, my goal is to build you up and encourage you today about His Spirit is within you. It's not just your faith. It says by faith we have His Spirit. So you need the faith to be able to acquire the Spirit. So if you were to ask me, as I said earlier, if I were to put a, a litmus test type thing together and put it into a psycho psychological evaluation, at the end of it, it would measure your faith. It would measure your relationship with Christ. And it would all funnel down to telling me that you're lacking in spirit or you're extremely a zealot in the spirit of the things of God. So if I were to put together something like that, and, and it would actually analyze your relationship with God. That's what man likes to do. We, we have a, a tendency to want to put things into a measure, into a graph, into a chart, and that we want to be able to show that we've increased or we've dropped off in and, and this quarter. And I learned a long time ago that the companies I worked for, they said, we lost $3 million last year. And I'm sitting there, and I, I know some of the numbers. I've read the, the report that our company put out. And what it said was, is that last year, we made $25 million. This year, our projected was going to be 30. And so we lost $3 million, so we're back down to... And so what they did, they, what they're saying, they lost their projection that they put out there... It, it, they made more money that year than they did last year, but because of the loss in this projected number, uh, we're not going to be able to give you a raise this year. And so they put it in their pocket. I learned how it works. And, and uh, I, I've, I've seen these things, how they come and go. Corporate, political, all of those are constantly hiring people to figure out ways to get more of my money. They, they, they hire people. Thousands of dollars a year to figure out ways to take from those around them. You ever thought about it in, in this world today? They, they basically tax everything. They tax your car. They tax your house. They tax the roads. They tax the gas. I could go on and on and on. They tax everything. Even, even if you have an inheritance one way or the other, leaving it or receiving it, you're being taxed. And I say to you today that they're looking for ways to do more. Until they get everything you've got, they won't be happy. And it doesn't look like it's far off. <laughs> they say, well, I hope not. I won't go into all of that. It's not, about a, it's not a political message. It's about our faith 
that we have a spirit, his spirit, not just a spirit. There are other spirits out there that your psychological evaluation would reveal should I design one. I believe I could, I could word that. That it would tell me also that you have a spirit of, of fear about something. You may be phobic about something. Meaning that you have a fear of it. And you can do those kind of things. But today, I think all of us are educated enough. It's not complicated. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. We can't see, but we're saying it that it is in faith, by faith, through Christ, and that we have His Spirit. There is where the difference is made. Having faith is good, but where's your faith at, and to what measure is that, that you have His Spirit? I want to turn to Isaiah, if you would join me there for a few minutes, and turn to the 42nd chapter. I'm going to read verses 1 through 9. But in the very first verse, he says right there in the book of Isaiah, I'm going to share something with you, and you might want to make a note of this or go back and listen later. Verse 1, at this point of the Scripture when it was written, was a prophecy for the future. Isaiah is full of prophecies. This first verse is a prophecy that wasn't fulfilled. I could look it up and tell you where it would, uh, would read from that uh, you can read about the fulfillment of that Matthew uh, 12 and 18, uh, Philippians 2, 7, Matthew. I could go on and on and mark and uh, other, other passages. But the, if you want to do this, a word study, that's great. But this passage of Scripture is a prophecy. Verse 2 is a prophecy. Verse 6 <laughs> is a prophecy. Verse 7 is a prophecy just in what I'm sharing with you for the future, and that's what's loaded into this passage of Scripture. So I'm not just reading Scripture to you. I'm sharing with you what was prophesied at that time. But it says in the very first verse, in the middle of it, I have put my spirit upon him. God applied his spirit. Have we met Christ have we made ourselves available that we might have the Spirit of God? Would God, would we open the door? He knocks and we open the door that His Spirit might come in. If I were to ask you today, when was that that the Spirit came into you that you began to see a different avenue of life? You started seeing different things. Those of you that are at home, I ask you the same questions. When did you feel that that Spirit of God came in, that all things were passed away and all things became new? Isaiah 42, verse 1. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my elect one in whom my soul delights. This is God basically speaking about Christ. I have put my Spirit upon Him. That should be a capital H in your Scripture. God placed His Spirit upon His Son. He will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. In the Scripture, you say, where do you read about America or, or, or different countries or whatever? You don't need to. You're either a Jew or a Gentile. I don't remember any other uh, spiritual genders. I don't remember it being confusing. There were Jews and there were Gentiles. And you were one of those two, one or the other. And if you weren't part of that, then he placed his spirit upon those. And it says he will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. That we were grafted in at that point. Let me read verse 2 of that 42nd chapter of Isaiah. He will not cry out nor raise his voice. This is, this is prophecy again. This is about Christ in his life on the cross being crucified. Speaking of Christ, he will not cry out nor raise his voice nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break. And smoking flax he will not quench. 
He will bring forth justice for the truth, for truth. He will not fail nor be discouraged. Where are you at? Where are you, where's your spirit? You say, are you discouraged? What are the words you're saying? What are you, what are you proclaiming about yourself? I know when I came down with cancer, as I'm thankful right now for the great report that I got, but I remember people would ask me, how are you doing? What's going on? What's the doctor saying? And they would, want to, and they would give me a, a group of questions, and I said, let me answer you this way. I had answered it so many times, trying to answer the fullness of their question, and I said, let me say it like this. In my life, I have never been a, a, had a greater opportunity in my life to, to see one of God's miracles than right now. <laughs> and I just said it that way. I didn't tell them, oh, I was sick on Tuesday or I was this and I felt bad and didn't get out on that day. I was taking the chemo and the radiation. I didn't do that. I said, I am one of the, the I think I, I'm just a major opportunity for God to do something great. And so rather than tell the details of it, I went to the faith side. I walked in the spirit, the spirit side of it, and I asked God to fill me with His confidence. Because without it, I would have been succumbed to. I remember one night, it was about 9 o'clock, and Kim asked me. She, she came to me, and I was there on the couch, and I don't know, I think the TV was going, but I don't, I don't think I have a clue what was going on. She said, are you okay? And I said, no. I said, but I will be. Right now, no, I'm not, but I will be. And I said, I'm looking to the other side of what I'm going through right now. I am a great opportunity for God to do something miraculous. Rather than complain about where I was at, as we, I mentioned to you about Job and different one and Joseph and his opportunity last week to complain, but yet he kept looking that there's something. God's carrying me. His Spirit's within me. He's placed His Spirit on me, and I have an opportunity to accomplish something great if I don't weary in well-doing of what He's saying for me to do. Hallelujah. By faith, we have His Spirit. Do you have His Spirit? or you're walking in the maybes and ifs. For faith now is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. Let me keep going here. I love the fourth verse of that 42nd chapter. He will not fail nor be discouraged. <laughs> I love that. Till he has established justice in the earth, and the coastland shall wait for his law. Verse 5, Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched, that, and stretched them out, who spread forth the earth and that which comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it. Where'd your breath come from? There's your answer if you have that kind of a question. Here's, I love this in this verse passages, and it says, uh, let me read that again. Who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk on it. Each of you have a spirit. Have you aligned it or connected it? You can have 10 telephones, but if you've never activated one of them, they're not going to work for you. Having a lot of them doesn't mean anything. Having a connection is important. I, the Lord, verse 6, 42nd chapter Isaiah, I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness and will hold your hand and I will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the Gentiles. God saying this, giving His Son to each of you. It's a prophecy. Verse 7, another prophecy. To open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the prison, those who sit in darkness from the prison house. I am the Lord. Not me. I'm reading to you what he's, God is saying. And he said, I am the Lord, is my, and that is my name. And my glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to carved images. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and New things I declare. Before, that, before they spring forth, I tell you of them. 
You might want to go on and read later what he's going to tell you about them. The, let me just give you a quick note there. Verse uh, 18 of the 42nd chapter of Isaiah, read from there down to at least uh, 20, 18 through 20 when you have time. I encourage you to read that. It's talking about the deaf. I think sometimes we've been deaf to the words of Christ. Some believe that we are just flesh and nothing exists beyond what we can see. I was, uh, saw something on the internet this morning it, it going around and I hadn't really noticed it. But I went into the comments and it talking about, should we be cremated? Should we be buried? Should we be buried in a Jewish fashion? Should we be buried in a, in a, uh, a, a wooden coffin or, or a metal coffin? Or, or should our ashes be uh, scattered to the wind? Or uh, some of those that are in the Navy have been in the Navy. You may know the story of you can actually have your ashes as a, a Navy person, and they will actually pour them off the back of one of the uh, destroyers, off of one of the ships. And there's a lot of things you can do in your ending of life. Many people, when you go into the comments, they say, well, and they'll, you'll look at all the common sense things trying to justify this or that or a tradition or a, a, uh, something that's scriptural. They'll try to uh, touch on some of those things. I say to you today that when you leave this world, that your spirit is going to live somewhere. No matter what happens with your ashes, whatever you decide to do, some are more expensive than others. Some are more uh, in a way of leaving a... a, a, a a lineage or something of yourself to make continuity. I think it's a good thing that there's a place that you can put a, a monument. Some people say, well, you're taking up too much precious land. We need it for the people, the real people, the live people. And they go on and use terms like that to exaggerate and say what they're thinking about in the end of life. But if our spirit is going to live somewhere, you can't create a mausoleum or a, a statue or anything to hold or keep that spirit, that soul. God is going to resurrect one day who you are, who you were, and He will judge all things. So our living today, in my opinion, through the Scriptures, and I do believe that they are true, I would love to sit with anyone who would like to come and sit with me this week. And if you're local and you hear this message, I'd love to visit with you and share these comments and what you should or shouldn't do about that. But I will say to you, God's not concerned about resurrecting the spirit of who you are. He says he, are, he is so knowledgeable that he can actually, with the sword of the spirit, he can, he can separate the soul and the spirit. That he can actually separate the two. How you do that, that's God's business. I don't know. I heard about splitting atoms. It would probably be somewhere in the nature of that complicated, but it's not complicated for God. Some people say that we're dust of the earth. Some people say that we have no spirit, no soul. You're going to come across a lot of different things. You need to study Understand best you can, and to share with those when, when you're questioned or need to give an answer that you would be able to share, not your opinion or my opinion, but you would share the love of God for those that would listen. This one little boy, he, was, <laughs> he came to his mom. He says, Mom, I need your help with something. And she says, Sure, son, what is it? And he says, Is it true that we are formed according to the Bible in Sunday school? My teacher said that we're formed from the dust of the earth. Is that true? She says, yes, the Bible does say that, but we have to come to a point of life that we either believe it or don't believe it. He said, well, if it's true, then if we're, the, we're, we're made from the dust of the earth, and then when we die, we return to the dust of the earth? She said, that's what the Bible teaches us. And she said, you've learned and listened well. And, he, and she says, but I don't understand. Why are you asking me this question? He said, well, Mom, I really got concerned. He says, because underneath my bed, somebody's either coming or going, and I'm not sure, and I think we should clean it up because it bothers me. So if you've got a lot of dust somewhere, and you say, well, I don't know if somebody's coming or going, 
Just go ahead and clean it up. Don't be concerned. Don't live in fear of what that is or isn't. Because your soul is cared for by God. That's the scriptures I just shared with you. He gave it. He will recover it. And it's all his business. Isaiah, if you would, uh, in 42, I'm going to read verse 1 again. But he said in that, I have put my spirit upon him, meaning Christ. God placing his spirit on the Messiah. Isaiah 42, 1. I'd like for you to turn with me to Ezekiel, if you would. If you keep going just a few pages toward Revelation, you'll come to Ezekiel, Lamentations, and right after that will be Ezekiel. Just a couple of, Lamentations is only a couple of pages, so if you turn too many, you'll go right past Ezekiel. But in Ezekiel 31, I want to share something with you there. I don't know if you've ever heard these scriptures uh, tied together and speaking about the soul that you have, how important it is and where it's going to spend eternity and how that we can make preparations and plans. By faith, we have His Spirit. But in Ezekiel 18, let me, uh, yeah, eight, I, sh I told you, Ezekiel 18, I should have said, not 32. Ezekiel 18, verse 31. Thank you, Lord. It says in verse 31 of Ezekiel 18, Cast away from you all the transgressions which you have committed. How do you get rid of your transgressions? Whose responsibility is it to get rid of them? 31 said for us, Cast away from you all the transgressions which you have committed. So we have a responsibility well, I'm waiting on the Lord to take that. Did the Lord give it to you? Or did you adopt it on your own? How did you wind up with that thought or that habit or whatever it may be? Where did it come from? You're waiting on God. It says, cast away from you all the transgressions which you have committed, whatever they are. And then it goes on to say, and <laughs> listen to this. This is about as southern as it gets. And get yourselves a new heart. <laughs> have you ever read that? that you get rid of those transgressions and you get yourself a new heart. Well, that's easier said than done. I have to get on a, a waiting list for a transplant. No, you do not. This heart of the spirit of who you are can happen when you have faith in God. You walk in those things in the spirit. How do you know if you're walking in the, in the spirit? We should walk in the spirit. The New Testament tells us. I hadn't even thought about this. It just, just flooded my brain. How, how do we know if we're walking in the Spirit? The Bible said that the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, and peace, long-suffering, meekness, and temper, self-control. If you don't have those things in your life, then you're not walking in the Spirit. So it's not complicated. Get rid of your transgressions. Then it says, and get yourself a new heart. That's about a southern, I don't know where they were from that wrote that. But I'm telling you, I understand that. Let me start at the beginning of 31 again. Cast away from you all the transgressions which you have committed, and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. So there is a spirit of this world, and the spirit that you have was not the spirit of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, meekness, temperance, and self-control. It wasn't any of those. The spirit that you had was the one of the world. You need to cast it aside, get rid of it, don't keep it or entertain it, and don't use it as a pet rock to carry it around. Oh, you just don't know, Pastor. I'm saying to you today that by faith we have His Spirit his spirit is an overcoming spirit. His spirit is a healing spirit. His spirit will never leave you, never forsake you. And that God wants you to walk in the fullness of his spirit. So how do you know if you're walking in the spirit? That last situation you were just in, was there any love in it? Was there any joy there? Was there? I had a conversation with a man this week. I said, I'm re reading your service bulletin about this subject. And it says this. He said, well, don't pay any attention to that. I said, wait a minute. If, why, why was it written if it don't pay any attention to it? He said, well, it was, the person that wrote it was not a technician, and they really should not have included that in there. Be not deceived. I said, well, all I have is this bulletin. I'm saying it, it says I need two pieces to resolve the problem, 
and, I, and you're only going to send me one. So send me an email that says that was incorrect and that it says that you're, what you're sending me is going to resolve the issue. That's all I'm asking. He, well, I can't do that. I said, well, you don't believe in what you're saying then. You don't believe that the bulletin is wrong. You don't believe that you, what you're going to send me. You're wanting to get me out of your hair and out of, off of your back so that I, I can go my own way and you can forget about this. Well, I said, I'm not going to forget about it. I need you to send me an email. And he says, he says well, I, I don't know that I can send an email like that. I said, well, I can call the CEO of this company back and I've already spoken with him. And he said, you did what? I said, I spoke with the CEO. I have spoke with God about each of you. And I've asked the Lord to put His Spirit within you where you need Him that you may be lacking in nothing. And that's my heart. But I can't go get you. I can't transform you. I can only, as I said, be reminded by me today. Thank you for letting me. Those at home, thank you for letting me remind you of the goodness of God. And how he wants his spirit within you. In Ecclesiastes chapter 18 and 31 and 32, they're so important. Get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. For why should you die, O house of Israel? As the Lord speaks to them, even as I shared with you about the Gentiles, that he came for you also. And this applies to you. Verse 32, For I have no pleasure in the death of one who dies, says the Lord God. Therefore, turn and live. <laughs> Is that blessed? Is that reassuring? For I have no pleasure in the death of one who dies, says the Lord God. Therefore, turn and live. Who is your spirit giving countenance to, heeding the message of? Do you know the Lord? I love that passage of Scripture. Who is God's greatest servant? His own son. Think about it. God sent His only begotten Son that whosoever would believe on Him should never perish but have everlasting life. God also, when He put that Spirit within Christ, and Christ says the same Spirit that raised Him from the dead is going to quicken your mortal body, that Spirit is within you, and He's wanting you to be built up in that. Not built up in anything that I would say to you, but through His Word and through His his love and his, his uh, imparting to each of you that that he wants to give to you. God's greatest servant was his own son. Turn, if you would, to the book of Mark. I'm going to continue right on to the back of the scriptures, going back to, I'll wind up probably in 1 John, a couple of quick scriptures, and I'm closing. God's greatest servant was his son, Mark 1, verse 9. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And in verse 9 of the first chapter of Mark, this passage of Scripture is about John the Baptist when Jesus came to him. And of course, we know that John the Baptist says he wasn't even worthy to loose the shoes of Christ Jesus. He even shared with Christ, he says, that you would baptize me, for I am unworthy to baptize you. And Jesus reminded him that there was a need to fulfill the prophecy that it would be, as it was written, that it would happen. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. I love verse 10. Let me share it also. And immediately coming up from the water, he saw the heavens parting and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. 
Let me read 11 also. Then a voice from heaven, uh, then, a, then a voice came from heaven, you are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Verse 12, immediately the spirit drove him into the wilderness. You say, well, after I, I got saved and that spirit came upon me, I felt that transitioning and, the, and the, I humbled myself. Then I went out into a wilderness. Where did Jesus go when the Spirit came on Him when He was baptized? Have you been into the wilderness that the Lord could take a moment and a time to teach you? In the discipleship, if I were to share with you that there may come a time when you find in yourself that you truly align your spirit, again, there's that word, with God's Spirit, and that you find that relationship that you may immediately... I have seen many people that they just read and read and read the New Testament over and over and over again. And I was amazed at some of the things that they did, and they separated themselves. I remember one guy years ago that he got saved, and every time I'd see him, he was a, a, a crane operator, and that he would be times that you're, you're doing nothing. And they had a radio, and so he had the radio there, and he had it, you know, and he would, he would be listening, but he had his little New Testament out. And every moment of his day, he was sitting there reading. And he would come to by me, he said, did you know about this in the book of John? Did you know about that in the book of John? Have you? And I said, I'm so excited with you because I saw a, a, a wilderness situation of him changing from the old person, the old man, into the likeness of God. And when I saw that, I said, you don't know how much it thrills me for you to ask me that question. I see something in you of a spirit, of a new spirit, and a new heart that God has given you, and you've received it. And I said, and you have a hunger and a thirst for the righteousness of God, and you're listening to what the Word is saying to you. Hallelujah. And you're not just a hearer, but you're becoming a doer. And I said, I'm excited with you. Where are we at? That same spirit, that that Christ was imparted. He gave to us. You might want to do a word study on the 12th verse of Mark 1. It says, immediately the Spirit drove him into the wilderness. We know what the word drive or drove uh, means. You might want to do a word study there. I won't share that with you. I'll let you think about it. You can do that uh, with a husband and wife at home. 1 Corinthians, keep going back the same direction, just a few books back, right after the book of Romans. Go out of Romans into Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'll read these and I'm going to be closing. Just a couple more here. How do the Spirit send us gifts? What gifts are they? You, this is a great study. I won't go into all of that. That's a, that's a sermon in itself. But in 1 Corinthians 12 verse 4, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Think about that. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. There are diversities in verse, say in verse 6, diversities of activities, but is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. The spirit you have and that that you do is a part of the body and you enhance it. May I ask the question directly? Do you feel like you're engaged to the, the ministry of, before you and that you're profiting that group that you're with? It's something we all have to do from time to time. Verse 8, For to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit, to another, the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healings by the same Spirit. I had mentioned to you out of Isaiah 12, 2, 3, and 4, that, and, uh, that one of the verses there, it says that, the, that there's many wells, but there's only one water. There's only one Spirit. And so I'm asking you today, do you know of those things? You could also go from there back to Isaiah 12 and verse 3. There's many wells, but one salvation. So it's in verse 3 of Isaiah 12. 
2 Corinthians 3, 6. The Spirit gives life. You say, well, I don't feel very lively. Why not? Who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. We're talking about the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Don't get caught up in doctrine, especially man-made doctrine. Be caught up in the Spirit that you would be able to have revelation. Galatians 6, 8. He who sows to the Spirit. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reach, reap, uh, reap everlasting life. James 4, verse 5. What spirit dwells in you? In that passage of Scripture, in the fifth verse of the fourth chapter of James, or do you think that the Scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously? I would encourage you in that passage of Scripture to read all of the fourth chapter of James to be able to understand the fullness of what I just read. Read all of James, fourth chapter. I'm closing today. You can stand with me. In 1 John, chapter 4, verse 13. 1 John, chapter 4, verse 13. He has given us His Spirit. I want you to recognize it's not an elusive butterfly it is, it's, it's obtainable. In 1 John 4, we know that uh, 1 John 4, 7 and 8 in that passage, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Everyone that loveth is born of God. But he that loveth not knoweth not God. You go just a little further into verse 13 right after that. It says, By this we know that we abide in Him. And He is in us. Because He has given us His Spirit. Do you have His Spirit? Those at home, those that are here in the sanctuary today, do you recognize, know, and when His Spirit begins to minister and show up, do you recognize it? Do you not only recognize it in those around you, but do you allow it to permeate who you are? and change you into the likeness and image of Christ. We're crucified with Christ, nevertheless we live, yet not I, but Christ that lives within me. The life that I now live, I live through the faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave Himself for me. Do you know Him today? Those at home, do you know Him? Or you're just doing in maybes and hopes. You can have the assurance that you are in Christ and He is in you. I thank you today for letting me share this passage of Scripture. I hope that you understand the, the blessing that God wants to be in His fullness and not in partiality to any other, that He gives one more than, than He gives another. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and He will add all things unto you. Do you know the blessings of God? Are you walking in the Spirit? Are you accomplishing His will? Thank you. Uh, thank you. That uh, Kim had just brought me a message, and uh, Gail is not with us this morning. Gail was in a serious accident yesterday, totaled her car. I, I didn't know of it till just now. So in our closing today, in our prayer, I want you to reach out and let's agree that the Lord would strengthen or help her uh, to go through the severity of that and not... Not be uh, succumbed to death it is, is a miracle in itself. But her car was total, so we'll be in prayer for Gail, and we'll lift her up and see what we can do to minister to her in her time of need. Uh, I know they're going back to New York not too long, and a uh, few more weeks they're going to be here, and, and so I'm not sure how that will change or work out. But 
God wants His Spirit in the fullness within each of us. He doesn't want me to be at three-quarter full and, and Vic to be at half full or, or you to be running over and everybody envious of you. <laughs> he doesn't want that. He wants us all full, walking in, understanding, able to minister this message to others and that they would be learning or being reminded of that that they may already know. I know even in school, they would, before a test, they would do a, a review. And that's what we as pastors do. We do some teaching. Those that are coming up, sometimes it's new to someone. And you say, well, I've heard all of that. Have you lived all of that is my question. Have you engaged in the, uh, the peace, the, the walking and the blessing, the fullness of it? So as I share with you in closing today, I ask that you would be able to walk in the fullness of God's Spirit. Father, we come to you today thanking you for your son. And you placed your spirit within him. We just read that. And then he, through the power of the Holy Spirit, has left his spirit and that it's imparted to us. We thank you today that we can walk in the spirit, in the fullness of the blessings of that that you're going to do for your people. We love you, Lord. We lift you up. We thank you today for that that you're going to do for every family that's represented, the extended parts of every family, as your spirit wells up within them. There's many needs in every family, the far-reaching parts of every family. We found out this morning, Lord, our church family here, that, that Gail is in need, Lord, of strength and healing from the accident that she was in. We agree together now in Jesus' name that you would raise her up. Let none of these injuries, Lord, uh, continue or, or plague her in any way with any symptoms or problems with bones and joints and that everything would be a miraculous miracle before those that would look at her car and what she went through. But God, we trust you today that you're going to minister to her. Help her, Lord, to overcome. I don't know if there's anyone else with her that may have been injured also, but if they were, then we, we, we uh, pray for them. And those that were in the other automobile, the other vehicle, I don't know what it was, but whatever they were involved with, Lord, that, that you would minister to them also. Lord, and we, we, don't, we don't just uh, go for our people or those that we call our brothers and sisters, but we pray that the miracle of God would be for the unbeliever and that they would see miraculous things happen because of this that's taken place. We thank you, Lord, as we walk in the Spirit for the love and the joy and the peace and the long-suffering, the meekness and temperance and the self-control that we have, that we could be disciples of Christ and show that love to one another as well as the world as we live that out in Jesus' name. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you that it's within each of us and that we can walk in the blessings of it. I ask today, Lord, that you pour out your spirit of new on all flesh. Lord, that the sons and daughters would prophesy. Oh, Lord, that we would dream dreams that there would be something miraculous taking place in the congregation of your church and we'll be mindful of you in everything we say and everything that we do. We love you, Lord, and we're closing this service. We ask that you would go with us today and lead us into all truth. Thank you for that that you're going to do this week as you answer the prayers that Kim prayed at the beginning of the service for those that are traveling and different things, and Richard and Joanne traveling possibly today, and that you minister to all of them and place a, a, uh, just an open path of, of protection, Lord, around them and before them. And we thank you for the, the testimony and the great message of safety and answered prayer. We give you all the glory and all the praise today as we close this service. For it's in Jesus' precious name we ask all things. Amen, amen. God bless you this morning. Thank you for being with us and listening. Hallelujah.